everyone, and welcome to another episode of Newscast. My name is Sam Healy, and in these videos, we tell you all of the latest news about our projects as well as the company. As always, if you don't want to watch the entire video, you can skip to the parts that interest you by simply utilizing the timestamps in the description below. For general news today, one of my videos on Thursday will be a solo play of Anastir using the rules we currently have for doing so, keeping in mind that it is a work in progress. I'll also have my live Q&A on Friday, during which we'll also be talking about Anastir, but we'll also answer any other questions from our other projects as well. I do want to apologize for missing the Mythic Plays video last week. We had an uncharacteristic snow day for this time of year, and our power went out for most of the morning. The kids had a great time playing in the snow outside, but we could not go live. On the shipping and fulfillment front, no less than 55 pallets of stock from Fullex have finally arrived at Quartermaster Logistics. Unfortunately, the packaging was not done satisfactorily, so QML is doing a full inventory on everything that they received. This will take some time, but it's a necessary evil, logistically speaking, so please be patient just a little while longer if you're waiting on product for Joan of Arc 1.5 or Steam Watchers in North America. But please also rest assured that we're still working to get you your product as quickly as we can. Now we do have a bit more of information on a few of our projects, so let's go ahead and get to them. For Joan of Arc today, Siege Expansion Towers and Doors have unfortunately been temporarily pulled from being replaced at this time. And this is crushing news for us, as this was one of the larger issues for Joan of Arc 1.5 fulfillment, for which we were happy to have a, re a resolution. But our hubs have inspected the quality of the items they received from the factory, and they did not pass our standards for replacements. And speaking to the factory, they informed us that this must have happened in transit, as they were in perfect condition before they left the factory. They are going to do another production run of the towers and doors, this time including an extreme temperature test before shipping in the hopes of ensuring that they arrive safely to our hubs this time around. We know that this is unfortunate news to say the least, but hopefully it will instill a bit of confidence in the fact that we are not simply about the business of getting Joan of Arc off our backs. We are endeavoring to make sure that you have exactly what we've promised to deliver. For Super Fantasy Brawl today, it has been reported that all the pledges have left Quartermaster Logistics for our North American backers. For those of you in the U.S., please contact our customer support team at support at mythicgames.net if you have not yet received your copy. For those of you in Canada, your copies are in transit. QML uses FedEx, who sends it to a freight forwarder in New York, who then uses Canadian Post to ship to backers. So while we won't have an active tracking set up for you, Rest assured that your pledges are on the way to the Great White North. For Darkest Dungeon today, we've got a major league treat for you. We've received a truckload of pictures from the factory, and of course, we need to share them with you, so enjoy.
furniture production is not yet completed, but as you can see, it's going quite well. And we're still in the process of validating files with the factory after receiving the proof prints and are happy to report we are still currently in line with the June deadline previously mentioned. For Monpoc today, we wanted to let you know that we have just received from Privateer Press what they call their dynamic update that they've recently released, which is generally concerned with uh, making sure that the game remains balanced from their end. Accompanying that is the news that their dynamic update will be included in our versions of the cards as well. We're also currently checking all the files for the miniatures internally, so that we can begin mold production at the end of the month. So while this isn't a ton of information, it does provide you with a milestone of sorts and indicates that work continues to be done on it, along with our other projects that are still ongoing. For Rise of the Necromancers today, we are reaching the end of the preparation work for the files, and translation is ongoing. A key rule in Undead Sea was tweaked to speed up the process of embarking on a ship, a minor change that is about helping the game flow smoothly. But as promised, today we're going to reveal a new piece of art and of gameplay. You might remember that during the campaign we unlocked four items for Undead Sea, and here is one of them. The designers had a few ideas and wanted these items to be a bit more elegant in how they handle as they are from an expansion without being too far off the core loop and mechanics of the game. The Soul Ships and Undead Sea items all have this philosophy. While the core game cards are all about giving a healthy dose of choice and consistent empowerment without overloading the players with their with abilities, the cards from the expansions can push certain synergies and strategies a bit further or make clever use of specific rule sets for the expansion. The build aspect of Rise of the Necromancers is one of its key features, allowing for a lot of replay value. Your Necromancer can be a loner, riding their skeletal dragon with a powerful arsenal of deadly weapons, be a magic user who requires no components to cast spells, or a commander of Hell Knights, or, well, it's really up to you, the player. What you're doing to combine the Necromancer's apprentices and items' powers, and what strategy you build around that, is what truly matters. So let us know in the comments what you think about this new item. Anisphere launches on Kickstarter at 7 p.m. Central European Time, 1 p.m. Eastern Time, today, and will run for 17 days until Friday, May 6th. We have a lot in store for this project, and we're very excited to see it finally launch. There's a good bit of content out there already uh, created by several different people from Quackalope to King of Average and from Rolling Solo to a bunch of French content creators including Trick Track. I also know that Becca Scott will have a video out soon for it and that Jeremy Howard will also be putting his attention to it as soon as he can. So here's our new trailer for it if you've not seen it already. Enjoy. It was long ago that the dragons ruled. Their king, Volcar, was intent on the world's destruction. The world spear put an end to his reign. Now, we face another evil. Our quest to wipe her from our lands is at the heart of our companionship.
I tell you, it's going to be an awesome ride and an even better game. So we hope to see you there starting today at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central European Time, and running until Friday, May 6th. Now remember that Leo will be live tomorrow at 6 p.m. GMT, 1 p.m. Eastern Time on our YouTube channel with a live Q&A in English and at 8.30 p.m. Paris Time with a live Q&A in French. So tune in if you have any questions or if you just want to see what wonders he might be able to show because you just never know what Leo's going to do. Remember also that Leo likes to do funded live streams to thank everyone for reaching that milestone, so be on the lookout for that too. As mentioned earlier, I'll be back to normal this week for my two videos on Thursday and Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific Time, so be on the lookout for those. But that's it for today, though. Once again, stay safe and play some games while you're at it, and we'll see you guys and gals on the flip side. Take care.